Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory and the fourth installment of It's All Up From Here, getting started in high-powered rocketry. This week we're going over how to use Open Rocket to design your very first high-powered rocket. Alright, now we're inside Open Rocket. You get a pretty good look at it just right off the bat. You've got your rocket design center here. The rocket will actually get built down in this area. Your basic components are in the upper right and where actually will list out where all your pockets your parts of your rocket are seated is right here to the left you also have a file tab an edit tab which contains your preferences so you can actually adjust units over here you also have a tools tab and a help tab the tools tab has some uh semi helpful parts in here i like the uh Component analysis, you can actually pull out some data on uh, different parts of your rocket as it goes through the air. But to get started on your rocket, the first thing you want to do is drop in a nose cone. This nose cone is going to be an Ogive nose cone, shape parameter 1, and a length of 12.5 inches, the same as the one we looked at in our last on Mad Cow Rocketry. You will have a base diameter of 3 and a 0.079 wall thickness. Shoulder, we're going to also want to set a 0 0.079 wall thickness, a length of 3 inches for now, which would be about what you want, and diameter, we're going to set as 2.9 for the moment. It's not going to be accurate to what it needs to be, but we'll come back and adjust that here in a moment. You also have the option in all your parts to do a mass override. So from here, we're going to throw on a body tube. The tube length, we're going to use a standard half-length tube from Mad Cow Rocketry of 3 inches. And now we actually get to see what our inner diameter actually is. It's not 2.9, it is in fact 2.843. So we'll go back into the nose cone and adjust our shoulder to match. I just copy and paste that over. But the body tube is in there, it's set, it's pretty quick and easy. But now you need to add your next part, such as your motor mount tube, your centering rings, but none of those, like your inner tube here and your centering ring, those aren't selectable. Well, you actually have to click on your body tube over here on the side, and then you get an inner tube choice. And so we know that we actually want a 38 millimeter tube, so I change it to millimeters so it's easier for me to work in since I know it's a 38 millimeter motor, and it automatically adjusts, and our length is going to be 8 inches for now and we want it at zero relative to the bottom. This is a motor mount, so we need to check the box here to say that the motor mount is there. Uh, we also, I've been forgetting throughout this whole thing, to set all of our components to fiberglass. Uh, so we need to make sure all the components are fiberglass. This one will actually be PVC on the nose cone because we're using a plastic nose cone in this design. So then you again have to click on body tube and you drop a centering ring in there. The centering ring automatically sizes itself. You'll select fiberglass, and then you actually need to move it up. Here, oh, wrong direction. I guess negative half an inch from the bottom because you need some space down here for your motor retention. And that's as simple as it is for adding one of those. And you'll need three centering rings total. So we'll actually need to pull the next one back in here. And I forgot this is an eighth inch thick to say that. And it'll be fiberglass. And for now, I'm going with negative five inches. I think I'll actually want negative six inches. Uh, this distance here between these two is the length of your fin. The longer your fins, the better you often, or the better luck you often have for getting um, stability. This last centering ring, also fiberglass. Oops. Not fiberglass, fiberglass, and an eighth of an inch. And this one we're going to set all the way. So that's eight inches. We want it at 7.5 inches. So actually, it'll be 7.375 because it'll be a half an inch from the top edge of the tube here to the top edge there. And we're measuring everything from the bottom of the centering ring for now. So now you've got all of these parts in here. Next thing you got to do before you even design your fins is you need to throw the motor in there. Otherwise, it throws off your stability calculations. So you click New Configuration, and then you double click over here where it says None. From there, you can select which manufacturer. I always have Aerotech selected, and then you come over and do H size motors. So we're just going to 
show only H's. We're going to go by designation. And I want an H242 unknown. This will be your disposable version of the H242 motor. This gives us our best uh, thrust curve, and it's not requiring your RMS systems, which requires a casing and putting the motor together. This is just a plug and play motor. You just click OK, and then the motor's in there. Yes, the motor mount tube is longer than the motor, but that is just fine for what we're doing. Uh, but from here, we jump back over to rock design, click on body tube, and click on fins. You have the option between trapezoidal, elliptical, or freeform. I'm a freeform fan, so here we go. Um, component material, this will also be fiberglass for what I'm doing. Um, root fillets are actually going to be phenolic, no. If not, looks close enough. But number of fins can be selected here. I always go with three because I find it a good number, reduces on weight and all of that jazz. And I forgot to move these up by five eighths of an inch, and I went the wrong direction. Negative five eighths of an inch. So shape. Then we select our shape. So starting points at zero zero, and the back point here. Is going to end up being 5.5 .5 inches. Oop, I was wrong. 5.375 inches. Inches. And that is the basic size and shape. And we'll zoom out a little bit to be able to see the fin. From here, we can actually drag these points around and adjust the size and shape of our fins. And you can see our stability is only at 0.965. You also have the ability to adjust your. Uh, fin dimensions over here To add more points you just simply click anywhere along and it'll add a new point and then control click to remove that point But we're gonna set the back dimension here, and I never go anywhere below the back edge of my rocket Which I know is at six inches So I am going to set this at six And I'm gonna go out about five inches so we're actually going out quite a ways and just with that we're already at 1.68 now one thing they'll always tell you is that you do not want to go have a very pointy tip here on your end so I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring it back into 4.5 and then I'm actually gonna add another point that I bring out to 5 so this will be 5 and the back point will be Let's go with 5.5, 5, maybe. Yeah, I like 5 better. 5 looks a little better. So we've got a lot of stability there. But then I can bring this point in, and I can actually adjust my stability factor. And I'm at 1.8, which is a great stability. But you notice how it's not really changing very much, and that's fully due to the fact that I am way out here. Now, making these thins thicker like this gives you a better chance of the fin not breaking off when you land and your fins have to survive landing to in order to search so this is just crucial that your fins are sturdy out on this edge and I want to make sure that this point here is one that's easy to hit so I've got to adjust to these numbers to something I can actually reasonably sketch out and cut to and I'm at a 1.83, which is a really, really high stability, since we only need to be between 1.5 and 1.9 on our stability. So having a 1.83 is doing really good. And I could go ahead and shrink the fins in some if I want to. So let's go ahead and just see what that looks like. So let's bring this into 4, and let's bring this into 4.5. So now we're down at a 1.65, which is a little more reasonable. And I want to go ahead and bring this over a little more. 0.64, that'll put me at 3 inches, and 1.75. So, gives me a nice 1.64 stability on the rocket, which I, I like that personally. Um, you can go with a higher stability fin and keep it back up at that 1.8, because then when you add a larger motor, you are going to have uh, be able to account for a larger motor going in your rocket and having this extra motor tube space makes it so that you could actually fly your level 2 cert off this exact same rocket just throwing in a bigger motor you just really need to be sure that when you're uh, putting the fillets on here that you can withstand the stress of that additionally once you have your fin shape created you need to add what's known as fin tabs 
These here will make up the part that actually extends from your fin down into your rocket. So you actually attach the fins to the rockets. I know that the distance here is about three quarters of an inch and I want it to be I was off by an inch, it's 5.375. But that makes up the entire space from the two bulkheads. So you'll actually butt your fin all the way against this bulkhead when you place it in there because you have to put in the center tube and everything beforehand. But those fins are necessary in order, or tabs are necessary for the fins in order to attach them to your rocket. From there, you've now got your motors, your fins, the entire rocket is designed. Well, not quite designed. Forgot you can also throw a parachute in there, and we're going to use a 30 inch diameter parachute. Also, can use 36 inch. We're going to use 8 line, and we're going to go ahead and push it down. Oh, wrong way. Push it down the component. The parachute sits about there, usually. And then we'll also want to go ahead and add a shock cord, which the shock cord, I think, will be. I want it in feet because I do everything in feet. So I want I want eight foot in there, eight foot of shock cord, and top of the component. And we're going to go ahead and put that about dead center since the shock cord actually connects between everything. But that gives you some more things. But it actually brought your CG a little further up, so you're at a 1.7 on your stability calibration. Forgot to toss those in there. But then you jump over to flight simulations. You notice your motor's already pulled into flight simulation, so you just want to hit edit simulation. Now here's the biggest thing you need to do at the launch site. None of this wind and launch site and any of that matters. But you are launching straight up, which usually you'll end up launching a couple degrees off, up to 10. And your launch rod length. This is actually not going to be the length of the rod you're flying off of, but the length that is called your effective length. So say you're flying off a six foot rod and you've got a um, 18 inch center between your launch rails. So you'll have two rail buttons on your rocket. One will go down here just inside this bottom centering ring and another one will go up here somewhere around the CG, maybe around the CP. It just floats somewhere in here. Um, and that distance usually ends up being around 18 inches roughly. And you want to subtract that 18 inch distance from your launch rod length, which will be about six foot. And that allows you to quickly get what your actual launch rod or effective launch rod length is. So if I do that math real quick, I have a 54 inch launch rod length, which is what we need to simulate this. So we go ahead and simulate. We don't need to plot anything, so you just hit close. Now you've got your velocity off the rod. 66.6 .6. that's great you need it to be above 45 feet per second to get off apogee right around 2,000 feet perfect and your total flight time is 102 seconds that is wonderful just under two minutes so and it hits the ground at 24.1 feet per second which is also just fine but right there you have designed your very first level one rocket so thanks for watching guys please consider subscribing and hang around for more content